Just the other day, I came across this post on OMG Ubuntu. VS Code drops Ubuntu 18.04 support. Devs screwed. Which, as a title, mostly makes sense. But after reading the article, I was left more confused about what's going on. Here's a quote. Yeah, this has completely screwed me. I have a number of older servers, and I can't get into any of them now. The only way is for me to downgrade and never update VS Code. Doesn't seem like a good solution. Which probably has you thinking, what in the world does a server have to do with running VS Code? You're not running VS Code on the server. Or are you? And the conclusion that I've come to is a lot of developers really rely on their modern tooling and have no idea how to actually use their environment. So this is the report in question. VS Code server won't start, waiting for server log. Now this user was running VS Code locally on a Windows 10 machine, running 1.86.0. However, something you may not be aware of is a component called VS Code Server. This lets you run a headless instance of VS Code on the server you want to connect to that has access to all the files on the server. You can then connect to the headless instance with a local VS Code client, whether that's running on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, anything else that VS Code runs on, and it seamlessly connects, hiding away all that complexity of SSH and all that other magical stuff, and just lets you do the development work. Now, VS Code Server is a completely optional component. You can just SSH into the server and just edit the files like you normally could with any other editor, but it is really convenient. With no extra fiddling required, it has full integration with your VS Code extensions, and it makes a lot of sense why developers rely on this. Now, this server they're running it on is obviously going to be a Linux server. And after an update, this is what occurred. Visual Studio Code could not establish connection to CPRT Docker. The VS Code server failed to start. I never had problems with updating VS Code. Anyone else has this issue? Turns out, it wasn't an isolated issue. Looks like old distros are no longer supported. I have the same issue on CentOS 7. I've got Ubuntu 18.04. On VS Code version 1.86.0, have the same problems connecting on servers with Debian 9 and 8. Switching to the pre-release version of the remote SSH extension gives me this pop-up before failing. The remote host may not meet VS Code server's prerequisites for glibc and libstdc++. Setting up SSH host VM details initializing VS Code server. I'm using Ubuntu 18.04. Edit. I am able to bypass this issue by downgrading to 1.85.2, and some other users in here were also using RHEL 7. So what do all of these projects have in common? Well, none of them are the latest versions of their distros, and what that means is they don't have the latest packages. In our case, what we care about is glibc or glibc, whatever name you want to call it. And here is an excerpt of the release notes for 1.86, Linux Minimum Requirements Update. In this milestone, we have updated the tool chains to build our desktop client. From this release onwards, VS Code Desktop is only compatible with Linux distributions based on glibc 2.28 or later, and glibc xx 3.4.25 or later, such as Debian 10, RHEL 8, or Ubuntu 20.04, and the exact same is replicated over on the server side as well. Starting the VS Code 1.86, the minimum requirements for the build toolchain of the remote server were raised. The pre-built servers distributed by VS Code are compatible with Linux distributions based on glibc 2.28 or later, for example, Debian 10, RHEL 8, and Ubuntu 20.04. Now, you might be doing the math in your head and thinking, why does it matter if 18.04 was dropped isn't that entirely the fault of the developer then? They are running an unsupported distro. Well, it's unsupported for you, but not if you have some money. So the standard Ubuntu LTS support window is five years. This means by April 2023, 18.04 was no longer supported. However, Canonical also offers a program called Ubuntu Pro. This lasts an additional five years on top of that and has additional security fixes and things like this. 
This goes until 2028. And the story is pretty much the same over on the Rail side as well. Right now they're in Maintenance Support 2, and then Extended Life Support goes until 2028. Which makes me very confused why this problem is being discussed in the first place. Why is 18.04 and Rail 7 even worrying about 1.86? Why are they shipping that package? Why aren't they holding it back at an older version and then cherry picking security fixes like you would normally expect them to be doing with every other package on these systems? Why are they shipping the latest version? Whatever the reason, the package is there and the problem has to be dealt with. Now, whilst it's new that the public is seeing this problem, it's not actually a new problem and has been known about for quite a bit. This is from December 19th, clarified platform requirements for 1.86 release. One thing I will praise Microsoft for is their extensive beta testing. They have a program called Microsoft Insider where you basically just use a newer version of the software before it is ready for the public. And generally this is used to deal with problems like this. If they want to deal with the problem. Type bug. Try to open a remote connection to an external Linux server. It fails in recent VS Code Insiders. Problem appeared sometime last week approximately. It works correctly in regular VS Code towards the same server. Server OS sent OS 7. However, it actually goes back even further. This is from the 1.82 release. Electron 25 update. This included an update from Node.js version 16 to version 18. Along with this, pre-built binaries from the official Node.js repo for Linux are now compatible with Linux distributions based on glibc 2.28 or later. This would mean dropping support from our servers for Ubuntu 18, CentOS 7, RHEL 7, etc. We are now shipping a custom build of Node.js for our Linux servers to maintain the glib 2.17 or later compatibility. This support will change in future updates when we are no longer capable of building newer Node.js versions on CentOS 7 images. So we advise our server users to update their OS versions if they are affected by this change. As we saw, they were affected by this change and many of them didn't change their server version. Now, I'm not going to hold the users at fault for this. I've said many, many times before, most people are not reading the release notes for every bit of software they're using. Unless someone else notices it and makes a big deal on Reddit, most people are not going to see something like this. So even though it has been known about publicly since August 2023, I can't hold the users at fault for that. Now there was actually one other affected distro that people didn't initially realize, and this one might actually be a pretty big deal. Amazon Linux 2 is bundled with glibc version 2.26. This is still very common to use on AWS. From the user's perspective, I totally understand the annoyance here. Microsoft should have had an in-app warning being like, hey, this is going to break in the next update. Either don't update or update your server because Glibc's minimum requirement is going to change. Yes, it would have been annoying because uh, you still have to update things. And in some cases, updating a server can't be done because you don't actually have the right to update the server. Somebody else is managing it. But I've been seeing some users in here that are like, oh, I can't get into my server. I can't work on my server. I can't use my server. If VS Code is the only way that you can access your server, at that point, that's a you problem. I get not having the convenience. That's totally understandable. But there are other ways to access your server. Now, it wasn't intended to be a long-term solution, but there was a temporary mitigation offered. Basically... Here's a link to download the old version. Download the old version and don't update. It'll keep working for the most part, assuming you don't have extensions that have to pull something over the internet and then API things change because you couldn't really update your extension at this point. But it will keep working at least for now. 
but a long-term solution was needed, and this is one issue made by an affected user. Keep in mind, two weeks ago, this was known about before it went widely public. Workaround for machines that do not have the glibc greater than or equal to 2.28. This user suggested, I propose the introduction of a mechanism that allows developers to override the checks for glibc and libstd C++ versions that must be explicitly requested. So it's not on by default, you have to say, I want to override the check. This could take on the form of a system variable that either disables the check or provides an alternative path to the requested libraries, e.g. VS Code glibc, path to the library. But this may not be the only solution available. Now, before I show you the actual solution, I want to show you this one affected user because this is by far my favorite case. I am a postdoc doing computational material science. I have been using VS Code with remote SSH for several years and am very appreciative of the efforts of the VS Code team. However, I am in a similar position as others. My work happens on a university-owned cluster that runs CentOS 7. I have a very little slash no say on the choice of OS on the cluster. So this change is rather unfortunate for me and many of my colleagues. Being able to do development work directly on the cluster with VS Code has been a huge productivity boost for me. I do everything from writing new code, submitting jobs to the queuing system, doing analysis in notebooks directly where the output data is stored, to writing paper in LaTeX on the cluster. I connect to the server in regular terminal perhaps once a month, usually because HTOP looks better to me there. I have been kindly teasing the Emacs slash Vim users in my department and encouraging them to just try VS Code. Yet, unless this issue is resolved in a not excessively technical way, I guess they might have been right to stick to their ancient ways. Really hope a solution can be found, and thanks again for the effort. Emacs and Vim chads just keep on winning. And just a few hours ago, a solution has been decided upon. But it's probably not going to help users like this. So, thank you very much for your feedback, and thank you for sharing your passion for VS Code, and sharing how it is being used to enable various scenarios. We have discussed this more in the VS Code team, and have decided to allow VS Code to connect to an OS that is not supported by VS Code. No support for glibc greater than or equal to 2.28 for 12 more months. Keep in mind, 18.04 and Roll7 are still supported for another four more years. We hope this will provide the needed time for you and your companies to migrate to newer Linux distributions. VS Code will show the appropriate dialog and banner that you are connecting to an OS that is not supported by VS Code. We expect these changes to land in our recovery release that will happen later this week. Thank you. If you need to be using it for more than 12 months, basically just keep holding that version and hope nothing breaks and hope that no security issues are discovered where, you know, maybe some sensitive code gets accessed by the public. Modern developer tooling like VS Code is very, very convenient. But when you're relying upon it this much, there are gonna come cases like this where the company's like, you know what? We don't actually care that technically these OSs are still supported. We're just not going to support it. Now, I would understand if this was some like little indie application made by like one dude. VS Code's made by Microsoft. Like there is no excuse in not properly supporting these systems. And the moral of the story is learn your environment. So if and when something does go wrong, you have something in place to continue working and not have to come up with some like weird workaround in that sudden moment. But let me know your thoughts down below. Do you make use of VS Code? Do you make use of the VS Code server component? I would love to know. Or are you a Vim user, Emacs user, or do you just never interact with the server whatsoever? Let me know down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon subscribe to Verify linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Personally, I'm a VS Codium user.